Welcome to the show, everybody. Hey, hey, hey. We've got Death Kings for the intro music and Draft Kings for our lines. And um, Carl is not going to join us today. Um, they've experienced a, a, a loss in the family. And this show is dedicated to the memory of Mel Moyer, who just passed away less than five hours ago. Blessings to your Sorry. family, Will. And thank you for joining us. Very, very cool of you. I appreciate that. Thank you. What we're going to do is first do our normal picks, and then we'll discuss our brackets, and uh, and then that will go from there. If you guys begging your indulgence, I find this weekend's NFC matchups way more interesting than the AFCs. So if we could start with the NFC and with Tampa Dallas, start with the last game, the Monday night game. Which, first of all, what do you guys think about playoff Monday night games in general? Yeah, oh, man, I'm football on Monday. Something. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but doesn't it put that team at a disadvantage the following week? Yes. Who cares? <laughs> I guess LA, nice. the Rams played on Monday night last year and won the Super Bowl. So I guess. Yeah. So, I mean, I think we overthink that a little too much. I think there is something to be said there, but I think it's a little bit of a, we're overthinking it. I mean, a day of practice is a difference, but when you've been playing for months on end, one practice won't change your season like that or one rest day. All right, which of you would like to start? Because I have very strong opinions about this game. Well, I'll start because we're just going to stay in the same games. Which game are we starting with? I uh, Tampa Dallas. Yeah. All right. This is what I'm saying. Um, I wrote down Dallas and I scratched it out right away because you don't fucking bet against Tom Brady. I've learned this for 15, 20 years. A guy is going to show up. He's going to show up with weapons, and somehow at the end of that game, they are going to win by a field goal and Dallas is going to go home and I'm going to laugh when I see Jerry Jones and whatever it is he's going to say and all the bullshit about Dak Prescott and oh my God, this was our year. It's going to be next week. No. How about them Cowboys? See ya, Tom Brady. <laughs> I, can go, I can go second and I'm going to have a bit of the opposite opinion, but not too far opposite. I am putting my bets on the Cowboys here. Two and a half. It's just a low spread. If this was like a five and a half, six spread, I'm not taking it. But two and a half, it's a field goal. And I think the Cowboys are going to win. So I'm going to take the spread there. Um, the Cowboys just have a way better offense, way more versatile. And as much as we've hated on Dak Prescott, he's not had the best year. He's had amazing games. So I think judging just based off, because they both have great, I mean, good enough defenses. I think the Cowboys just have a way better offense, and I'd rather rely on a good offense with a good offensive line than Tom Brady with no offensive line. So give me the Cowboys minus two and a half. Actually, the offensive line's been getting better. They're getting some players back. Got to sit back. But um, yeah. I, I uh, you also with 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 the uh, pay, with excuse me with Tom Brady, one thing he's always been able to do is take advantage of overly aggressive defenses. Yeah. And the Tampa has like four tight ends that can block and can pinch. So you can take out the defensive ends, throw quick passes, demoralize the Cowboys, maybe run the ball a little, keep the Cowboys off the field. I think Tampa's going to win this game, and I'll give you a key player to watch. Uh, another thing that Brady also does is he'll take advantage of uh, – he'll use his fourth receiver. He'll use lesser-known ones. There's a guy named Devin Tompkins who's been stepping up for them. Now, if he comes back and keeps playing well – and Evans is open or whatever, I think Brady's suddenly going to have options he hasn't had all year. I also don't think Mike McCarthy's a great coach. I don't believe Jerry Jones when he said earlier this week that no matter what happens, Mike McCarthy still has his job. That's bullshit. I think Tampa wins. All these Dallas fans, they're so full of shit. They're, oh, we're going to end Tampa. We're going to end Tom Brady's career. Nope, that's Philly next week. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I really do. I, 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 I think, and plus it's going to be a zoo in Raymond James stadium. It's going to be a zoo. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I think we could all, we could always just blame Giselle if he loses. <laughs> I am taking Tampa to win. I'm taking Tampa to cover. Just one thing before we move on to the next game. I just wanted to comment on it. There is one thing that I did pick up on this year though. And I know you're getting Jensen back and he's a great center, but what happened when they played the 49ers overly aggressive pass rushing defense? Back then, the, the, the completely different offensive line and a lot less weapons. Tompkins hadn't stepped up yet. Who was playing wide receiver? I totally Evans understand that. Evans I was totally healthy. Understand that. Evans was healthy, and so was Godwin. I think the Niners' defense is better than the Cowboys. Yeah, agree. And they scheme better. 
Agreed. But I think still, that Dallas is going to be exposed, not as a bad defense, but not nearly as good as San Francisco. Agreed. Agreed. I, I, I think I think that you throw out all of your fantastic, wonderful analytics and you say Tom Brady is playing in the playoffs at age 40 and 75. That's With all Botox. That's Has all it, you need to know. You can't yeah. bet against the GOAT. I've done it. I've lost so much money. I'm not doing it anymore. Is he the first quarterback to start a playoff game with Botox? Why not? Since George Blanda, maybe. I don't know. All, All right, right let's let's next game. Giants, Vikings. All right, I'll start again. And uh, I'm doing a lot of this with my heart because I put a bet in March of 2022 that the Vikings were going to win the Super Bowl. Uh, I still think that they win. They close something out with the close game. If Daniel Jones is starting, which he might be, you know, I think New York, and this is going to be a nail biter as well. Maybe somebody takes a field goal at the very end to win it. Um, but I think the Vikings are going to figure out a way to squeak by, maybe get some um, defensive turnovers and, and make this game a nail better at the end and then move on to play San Francisco the next week. Yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> well, man, you guys got me in a tough spot. So, this is a sheet, tough game. This is a my, tough, the toughest of the six. On my sheet, I have the Vikings for my, my playoff picture, but. I'm going to take the spread of plus three for the Giants. And I know this is a wild, wild take to take, but I just don't think the Vikings win by more than just some crazy nail-biter finish where they win by a couple points. I think the Giants keep us such a close game that it makes me almost want to bet for the Giants because consistency-wise, the Giants have been extremely more consistent, especially recently, over the Vikings who have been up and down and up and down. I mean, they got beat down by the Packers. The Packers... So I, it's just got me in such a fluster. I don't know what to do. Give me the Giants plus three. I don't have too valid of opinion on that one. I just got a feeling. I feel like the Giants can run the ball. Oh, go ahead, Ryan. No, I'm just saying this is great. Will and I have exactly the opposites for both. I have Vikings minus three. He has Giants plus three. In that first game, I have Tampa. He has Dallas. So this is good. <laughs> two for two. Someone's going to be right. wavelengths over here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm taking the Giants on my brackets and against the spread. I, I think they'll run the ball. I really believe in their coach. The Vikings have won a lot of close games. That's great in the regular season. I don't know if that's going to, I don't know if you can rely on that. I think that can almost work against you where you, where the players can have in the back of your head, ah, oh, whatever. We'll just, we'll pull it out at the end. I don't know. The Giants, you know, I'm reminded the year the Patriots went, reg, uh, went undefeated in the regular season. They played the Giants late in the year as Minnesota did. They played a close game and barely beat them. And then the Giants came back and punished them. Going to happen here. Yeah. I like how you said uh, we'll, we'll be safe and just pull it out at the end. We don't know what happens when you try and do that. Right. Three months later. <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow. Spoken with experience, was that? <laughs> no, no. I was trying. Oh. Hey, and, if, if, and with that, let's talk about San Francisco and Seattle. Another one I have Ooh. strong opinions on. I'm oh, it's going to be a blowout, a blowout, right? I'm staying away from the spread. That's, uh, that's too many points. For me. I do think San Francisco is going to pull it off, but I think there's going to be over 42 and a half points in this game, regardless of how good San Francisco's defense is. I just think there's going to be points for uh, maybe it's going to be 27, 21, or 28, 21. But um, I am going with the over. And I think San Francisco does right. um, So here comes my passionate side of being a 49ers fan. And don't, before we go into this, remember there's going to be bias here. I can't help it. I'm a 49ers fan. But um, yeah, give me the spread minus nine and a half. I think it's going to be an annihilation on the field. I think Seattle's got a good team, but I don't think Pete Carroll, he's good, but he's not great at scheming up, especially not against the 49ers. They play close. It's 49ers, but going back to the last time they played the second time this season at Seattle, the Seattle team was fully healthy, including the running back, everything. 49ers were missing defensive tackle Eric Armstead, who's a beast, and gets put right next to Nick Bosa on the pass rush. They were missing four more players in the linebacking core and, and the safety defensive back core. They were missing part of their O-line, and they were missing running backs, had just gotten Christian McCaffrey. My whole point being is they had – that was a close game. That was a seven-point game, and that was with worst-case scenario for the 49ers. I don't see this one being close. I think the 49ers are just too good of a team. I don't think the Seattle Seahawks offense is going to score that many points, so give me the spread, minus nine and a half. 
Props to Bosa leads the league in QB hits and nobody else is even close. Nope. <laughs> uh, he also does well against Seattle and, uh, and I do see San Francisco going to the conference championship, but I have a feeling Seattle's going to come out hard. I really, I really think that. Yeah. And I, and I think uh, Carol will have them charged up and they'll get a lead and then San Francisco will come back and win the game. But then once they get the lead, they'll decelerate because they don't want to turn the ball over and make mistakes. So I say Seattle covers and San Francisco wins. And by the way, what's the spread? Eight, five, nine, five, I believe. Nine, five. Oh, beautiful. Thank you. Even better. <laughs> I feel like you just handed me a point. All right, we're on to the AFC then. I hope it's time. AFC time. Sorry, sorry Rob. I, I like how you said, uh, you know, they're going to come out hard. We all know what happens when you do that. Oh, my so, goodness. Yeah, let, let's, let's <laughs> you must be on tour. AFC. You're all frisky. Yeah. Stacey's going to play a show with uh, that other band tonight, yeah. so he's all fired yeah. up. 40, 46 year old kid. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, so the AFC. Can, can we end the Cincinnati Baltimore? Because I, I do want to talk about my Pittsburgh Steelers at the end of the AMC North. So let's let's start with um the Chargers and Jackson Road. Okay. Okay. We all, I... we all go ahead. We all watched uh Jacksonville and Tennessee um make their way into the playoffs to win that division. Very interesting game. <laughs> I think that Eckler. We'll win this game by himself. I think the Chargers are going to win minus two and a half. I think he gets two touchdowns. I think the guy is an absolute beast. I, I love that I picked him at, at number four in fantasy football, even though I didn't make the playoffs in any of my leagues. He still, he still is my uh, my workhorse. I just don't think Jacksonville as good as they've improved and as good as the defense is, is ready to move on in the playoffs yet. And maybe I'm wrong, but my, my gut says that the Chargers are going to win by a field goal at least. So I'm locking it in, baby. Go Bolts. You are wrong. Lawrence is ready. That coach has been there before. He's been to the Super Bowl. He's going to know how to prepare. And they've got a pretty good running game, too. Everybody's all about the Chargers. And and uh, I hope Herbert's freaking ribs are okay, because I don't think they are. I don't think they have been all year since he got hit in that game that he should have come out of, uh, like, week two, that night game. Remember? And he kept playing, kept playing, and they lost. Uh, I forget what game. Okay, he hasn't yeah. looked the same since yeah. he's had like flashes here and there. I think Jackson that again, talk about a building being a zoo. Do you know how hungry those fans are? I've never heard a Jacksonville stadium as loud as it was in that Tennessee game. Let's go Jacksonville. Come on, Trevor. Let's let the Lawrence era begin. I walk my dog right over here and there's a stadium there that Trevor Lawrence uh, played in uh, not too long ago. Let's go. You're talking about it's Jacksonville. adorable. Prince, Prince Valiant. He is adorable. Fucking adorable. Well, I can okay, well, that's you. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll go in with my pick here. Uh, I'm going to take. I was. I had something written down, but I'm kind of backtracking. Give me well, you're improvising. Point. You call it At improvising. Thirty-seven and a half, and this is not what I play, picked beforehand. I wanted the Chargers yeah. with the spread, and the spread is great. Um, if you really have someone you believe is going to win this game, take the spread. It's a low spread. Take it. I personally am just fifty-fifty on this game. The Chargers are either going to come out and they're finally going to be fully healthy, and Herbert's going to look good, and they're going to dominate the Jaguars, or this game is going to be a close battle to the very end. I, I don't, that. My one issue with this entire situation being Trevor Lawrence, and I know I went with the 49ers, and I know Brock Purdy is a rookie and has never played a playoff game, but like I said, bias would take over there. When it comes to this game, he hasn't played in the playoffs before. Trevor Lawrence has not, and I – he is very wish-washy. He goes game to game from a very beautiful pass, a very beautiful, oh, my gosh, he made this huge play. And the next game you watch him and you're like, oh, this is rookie Trevor Lawrence again. So I would rather take the consistency again, but give me the over 47 and a half. It's going to be an offensive game. They're both going to put up points. So give me 47 and a half. So, Ryan, you asked to end on, on Baltimore Cincy, right? So we should do Miami yeah. Buffalo next? Yeah, let's do Buffalo, Miami. And, and, and huge shout out to DeMar Hamlin uh, returning home and everything. Great pick guy. Um, it was such a, a crazy tragedy that turned into a beautiful story. And so it's so great that he's uh, discharged from home. He's Thank God. Guy, so, you know, I, I got some love to pick. I also think Buffalo is going to absolutely annihilate Miami. Um, I'm a little bit sour that uh, they came out and destroyed the Patriots like I knew they would, and the Steelers came out and, and crushed uh, Cleveland. And then all I needed, I had to root for the Jets. The Jets. 
I hate the Jets. <laughs> and Miami, Miami beat them in, a, in an unwatchable game, 9 6. They're going to come in. I don't even know if they have a quarterback. I couldn't, I couldn't spell or tell you what his name is. And Buffalo is just going to be like, dude, we're going to be playing our four stringers in the fourth quarter because it's going to be like 867 to 3. I'm picking minus 13 Buffalo. Let's go, Bills. By the way, did you guys notice that um, the Patriots' special teams are so bad that there were six kickoffs returned for touchdowns last year, three of them against the Patriots, two of them in that game against Buffalo, and the fucking – He's been terrible since he took oh, over. He came back with some <laughs> – You lagged out there for a second, Rob. Oh. Right, right, when you, right when you're about to swear, that's hilarious. Right when you went on your – Tangent there. That's the FCC, man. They keep an eye on me. Okay, the internet should be okay now. What's the over under on this game? Oh, let me look right now for you. At 43 and a half. Yep. Uh, it's going to be way over that, too, just by Buffalo. I think just yeah. Buffalo is going to put up the same size. <laughs> if you don't yeah. mind, I'll lead up after if you don't mind, because I got the exact same opinion. I think it's going to be an annihilation. Miami's defense, not good. Their offense was good. Now they don't have a quarterback. Buffalo's defense, great. Offense, great. I got no worries here. Give me the spread. Give me the over. Give me whatever you want to give me. Buffalo's taking this and running with it. Me too. I'm taking Buffalo all the way, but let's just, to, to make it interesting, what could Miami do to win? Uh, uh, Will, what do you think about this? What about Tyreek Hill returning kickoffs and punts? That would be, I mean, playoff-wise, I think that's probably a smart idea. It's the same thing. I think a couple teams do that. I know Sam Fran does that with Debo. They put him back at punter whenever playoffs start. Um, or punt returner, I apologize. But I think really the biggest thing is going to be creating scenarios where the quarterback who can't lob it deep and can't make the plays can get the ball to waddle and help. That's your one chance of keeping up with this Bills team. You have to get it in their hands. But still, how do you do that? You know, it's not – it's not going to be easy. And I really think they're going to have a really tough time getting past this Bills team. Also blitz the fuck out of Josh Allen in the red zone. That's where he's been making mistakes lately, but still. That's yeah. true. Yeah. He had a lot of turnovers this year. All right. Before... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do we go? Let's talk Pittsburgh as we, as we segue into the Baltimore, the, what could be an interesting game, but Lamar's not playing and Huntley's also got a shoulder thing. But Ryan, what were you going to say about the the Pittsburgh Steelers? Uh, well, there's two, two things before my brain thinks too fast. One, God, I wish I know Mike Tom would have wanted to this and made a joke. I wish they'd pay six million dollars to bring JJ Watt to the Steelers for one year and have all three Watts play together and just make a three-headed Watt monster. JJ and TJ on the same line, just that would be that'd be terrible. So insanely awesome. Um, like Gordy Howe, Mark Howe, and Marty Howe. Yeah, and it's it's you know, and then we have the Hayward brothers. You know, Hayward's been doing well at the he's, tight end when he's been playing. He's, he's I think that Najee and Jalen Orland, who was averaging over six yards per carry, I think the explosiveness and the young talent picket Pickens is going to be a beast. Najee, Friar Youth. If we draft an O line, this was supposed to be a rebuilding year. This was a retooling year. And Mike Tom, we finished the second half of the season. We finished nine and eight. We finished over 500, but we were two and six, two and seven or something. So that was a lot of fun to watch. I hate that. I had to root for the Jets and we couldn't get some. You know, I'm so some sorry about that. That's but awesome. you know, it is what it is. I'm happy with where our team is. I don't, I'm not one of the guys in Pittsburgh that calls him mediocre Mike. I think he's a fantastic coach. I think he has made several coaching decisions and time management, and but that's going to happen. People make mistakes. But I think he has control of these young kids, and these young kids are hungry, and they're going to come out. Pittsburgh's going to be a real threat. I think I saw their schedule. You can put me on this right now. There's a chance they could be 12 and 5 and bring that division next year. And that's saying there's three losses to the Browns, Bengals, and splitting the series in the AFC North. I, I mean, I, I just looked at that schedule, and I'm, I feel like most of those teams are beatable. San Francisco's going to whip our ass, but I mean, there are there are beatable teams. Here. So I'm going to go in and talk about the AFC North. I don't think Baltimore's going to get it done. I think Cincinnati, I mean, have they lost a the game in the last eight games? When Burrow and Chase and, and his weapons and talent are on, and if the defense just contains Hutley or whoever the quarterback is, I think Cincinnati in the second half runs away with this game. And I think they're going to cover eight and a half. You know, it's one points. And they're going to they're going to win like 27 14. So I'm taking the Bengals. And I, I think they're going to be uh, a big surprise to, to get back to the Super Bowl. 
So even though I'm supposed to hate everybody in that division, uh, the team I hate the least is the Bengals. So I'm going to pass to them and um, see if they can rep the eggs some more. I think Tomlin's kind of taken over as the best coach in the NFL, at least regular season, best coach in the NFL. I really do. Don't, I mean, don't ask Cap. Don't ask Cap in Pittsburgh. <laughs> Dude, that, that, they won, not, they won Super Bowls or nothing, you know. But you've you've nine and eight again, again over five hundred. No matter what happens to that team, he gets you over five hundred. It's fucking amazing. Why am I swearing yeah. so much in this weekend? <laughs> it's early. I don't like it. I'm annoying myself. <laughs> I will. Um, your comment on Cincy because I've got Cincy Baltimore. I've got a strong feeling on this one. Uh, uh, I was depending on if Lamar plays. If Lamar plays, give me Baltimore all day. But it, like you said, it's not looking as likely as we would have hoped. So I want to take the Bengals, and it's, this is nothing, but I, I think there's got to be upsets in the playoffs, and I think the Bengals are riding too hot, a little high on their horse. They went to the Super Bowl. You know, they've had a they've had a lot going on. I could see a little sleep hangover, whatever you want to call it, type of thing happening here where they lose in the first round or the second round. I really would love to see them play the Bills in the rematch, but I don't think they're going to win it. But that would be my favorite. So strictly just to see the Bengals and the Bills play legitimately again, give me the Bengals minus eight and a half. By the way, if anybody's peeking in, that's Will Engelman, not Carl Engelman. So you barstool people who are going to hire him eventually for the barstool bathrobe pick show. That's, yep, that's Will me. Engelman. No, hey, just no, no. Like, if you guys get hear- a robe, I'm on. Just send me a contract with a robe. I'm there. Erica Nardini, are you watching? I'm also in your rooms. But you got a job. You got like eight. Job. <laughs> you, got you got too much to do. I've got too little. We're on <laughs> two different sides of the spectrum here. <laughs> All right, as a Patriot fan who went through the whole Tom Brady era, the one coach who was best at slowing him down and throwing weird shit at him was Harbaugh. Also, again, as a Patriot fan, we stopped Cincinnati for a while earlier not too long ago even with our shit offense and our defense back on the field back on the field back on, we still slowed cincinnati down so i think harbaugh is going to figure out a way to slow them down baltimore is going to have anthony brown i mean huh? so i don't think there's gonna be much scoring so i'm taking the under i, I I'm, I'm thinking like uh 13 to 6 kind of game 16 wow. to 7 kind of game. But with that Bagels offense, it's tough. It's a tough one. No, they're, they're putting up more than 13. They can slow down. They can be slowed. Well, anyway, maybe so. But the over-under is, and I'm looking. Can you help me here? The over-under is um, 40 or something? Yeah, 40.5. Look at that. So let's say they score 34. And uh, the Ravens get three. It's an under. Yeah. Even if the Ravens get six, you still yeah. got it. Still got it, baby. So I just have a feeling the Ravens are going to be able to slow them down and the Ravens aren't going to be able to do much with with Anthony Brown. I do agree with you in some aspects there. I think the Baltimore defense is really going to step it up and I think they're going to give the Bengals a challenge. Like I said, though, strictly just for the Bengals, Bills, rematch, everything that happened and all the rivalry that's come up to this. I just want to see that game more than anything. So I'm going to take this in my heart. (laughs) I'll be watching with my people in Traveler's Rest, South Carolina. Looking forward to it. The fancy stuff over there. I'll be in my basement. So, but it's going to be a great time. Great time. All right. We got, we got to let Stacey go soon. So, you want to talk brackets real quick? Sure. Um, so, my bracket, I, you know, I crossed out a few things and went back because I didn't want it to be contrary. I didn't want to, I didn't want to be the chalk here. I wanted to, uh, you know, not have the same bracket. So I've got, you know, Kansas City over the Chargers, Cincinnati over Buffalo. That's my big, uh, I think that's going to be a great offensive game, but I think Cincinnati's going to push through. And then I think Philly or Tampa Bay is going to lose to Philly. And San Francisco, I'm sorry, Will, is going to lose to Minnesota. However, Minnesota's going to lose to Philly. And Philly is going to win the Super Bowl over Cincinnati. My God. It's a little... You must be on tour. <laughs> no one picked. No one. No one picked that bracket. It's no. tour haze. Go ahead, Will. Correct. Um, I got the Kansas City Chiefs also beating the Chargers as well. I think that should be an easy one to mop up there. I got the I got the Bengals and the Buffalo rematch. I got Buffalo coming out, and then I got a Buffalo heading to the Super Bowl for the AFC beating the Chiefs. I think that would be an amazing game. I would just love to watch it. I'm really happy for the end of the AFC playoff run. That's going to be a lot of fun. Yes. I'm on the other side. I got the Eagles playing the Cowboys, and I got the Eagles running away with that game. 
And then I got San Fran playing the Vikings. And I got San Fran running away with that game. We'll see. I hope that comes into play. because That'd be <laughs> awesome to see for the brackets. Um, and then I got San Fran beating the Eagles to go to the Super Bowl to lose to Bill's Mafia. I got Buffalo. There you go. There you go. You couldn't, you couldn't, just couldn't push him all the way through, huh? I couldn't. I sat there and I was like, I got him all the way to the Super Bowl, but there's, I can't, I can't, I can't have Brock Purdy winning a Super Bowl over Josh Allen. That's ridiculous. Ridiculous. Buffalo, Buffalo so it's going to be Joe Burrow. <laughs> all right, Rob. All right, Rob. What do you got? Well, it, with my, you know, I have the Jacksonville winning, so I have KC beating Jacksonville, mm-hmm. and I have Buffalo beating Cincinnati, and then they beat KC and go to the Super Bowl. I have Philly over Tampa because I have Tampa winning, and uh, yeah, I have the Niners over um, oh, shit. New York. <laughs> yeah, over New York. <laughs> Did I mess that up? No, no, I'm pretty sure. no right? Niners, yeah, Niners, Niners over the Giants. Yeah. Yeah. And then I have Phil. Sorry, dude. I, I I think the rookie quarterback thing will come into play when you go, go into Philadelphia in a conference it's championship. Fair. You're not going to win that game with a rookie quarterback. I'm sorry. Just winning. By the way, just winning one game with a rookie quarterback. Who's the last team who did that? I couldn't tell you. I'm pretty positive a rookie quarterback hasn't won a playoff Steelers. game in a long time. Seattle with Russell Wilson. Yeah, oh. that had to be the last time. Yeah, that's like 15 years ago. I think yeah. I don't know. I got yeah, 10 years ago. Yeah, that's a long. I mean, it's a minute it's, ago. It's tough to win, especially going into Philly with the most, you know, not all, but the, the bad wing yeah. of the Philly fans is the worst. There's lots of great uh, Eagles, awesome fans. The, the, the asshole wing is, is awful. I will say, though, if the Eagles do continue to advance, we have a ringer. We could come on and talk about the Eagles, another musician, if you guys want, in future uh, episodes. But anyways, yes, I have Baltimore, uh, Buffalo beating Philly in the Super Bowl, just like I said in episode one of this of this show. Well, by the way, Will, do you have Carl's picks? We didn't talk about Carl's yeah, picks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll bring in his picks. Yeah, run them off. So let's just go on a speed run through these, and I'll get them all out there for you. So first, he's got Jacksonville on the over 47 and a half, but he also has Jacksonville moving on past the Chargers. This is the AFC. I apologize. He's got Cincy over Baltimore. He wants the over of 40 and a half. He's got Buffalo beating Miami. He said, give me whatever. Buffalo's winning. For the NFC, we'll come back to the AFC in a second, but I want to get these initial ones out of the way first. He's got San Fran beating Seattle by the spread. New York winning on a spread against Minnesota. Tampa minus two and a half against the Dallas Cowboys. So he's got Tom Brady up there. And then to finish out the NFC, he's got Philly beating Tampa. He's got San Fran beating New York. He's got San Fran in the Super Bowl. And then on the opposite side of the bracket, we got we got Kansas City playing Jacksonville. Kansas City, easy win. Cincy playing Buffalo. He's got Cincy winning. And then he's got Cincy and San Fran in the championship for a Cincinnati win. Wow. <laughs> All right. So we've got two Buffalo, a Philly Eagles, and a Cincy Bank Bungle. I like it. Like Did he make yeah. spread spread and over under picks for this weekend? Who Carl? He just said them all. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I heard I heard the brackets. I didn't hear the spreads, but okay. Oh, I was trying to well for yeah, he, he did, did both. Uh, all right, yeah. all right, cool, cool. Well, we got them all down then. Awesome. Uh, I want to end with this real quick, uh, Ryan. Uh on New Year's Eve, you were playing the linear. And all in I was, time. I was there. Yes, yes. So uh, as far as I could tell. Um the, during the linear. All in time came up out of nowhere. Was that unplanned? Do you remember that? Um, are, you, are you sure it was uh, in, in linear? I do remember it happening. A lot of a lot of things happened. I, I think um, initially I had started playing um, the major six chord, and then I was listening to the guitar players who were who were going to the flat seven. So I had to uh, make an audible and adjust with my ear, and it ended up being the same chords as all in time. And uh, I kind of gave Brennan a look and I was like, you know, I'm not trying to do this right now, but, but it is this. And I think organically from a, from a gesture, it kind of just happened. And um, I've got a lot of reviews that people enjoyed that because it wasn't on the set list, it wasn't planned. Um, and it's funny sometimes when you're improvising, um, you end up trying to do something different and you get pulled into something that sounds like something you had before that you just, just pull it out. And, and, uh, and playing, and uh, everybody's having a good time. The crowd tended to be into it too. So, yeah, not planned. One of those fun, organic uh, 
by chance coincidence to chord progressions. And today is, um, is Joel Cummins. I think he's 77 and Chris Mitchell's birthday. Both are celebrating their birthday today. We're playing in DC tonight and we're about to go take a tour of the Library of Congress um, music um, where Lizzo played that flute, you know, that glass flute from 100, 200 years ago. So we're wow. going to do that. And, and I think we're going to do a little uh, camaraderie, a little band camaraderie. We're going to take a tour of the Capitol. That's good to hear. Um, Very cool. Yeah. Very peacefully, of course. And uh, it's going to be a good day. It'll be a major show. Um, I'm excited to play the first, first, first show of the new year. Uh, tonight at the 9.30 club for the next two nights. So make it our home for, for two days. That'd be great. And you were in a waiting room a lot this morning. So, you know, maybe throw that on. We'll see what happens. We'll yeah. see what happens. <laughs> Take it easy, guys. Thank you so much for your time. Give my love to Carl and Ellen. Of course. Blessings. I know the feeling. Yes. It's, not, it's awful. Blessings. Yeah. Blessings. Love Thank you guys. You